Look at that shiny and let's add a custom trim material and trim pattern to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Oh ho 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 ho, right. We found ourselves back in Taylor once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom armor trim, both a material as well as a pattern to our Minecraft mod right here. Now for this, it is actually quite important that we have data gen because we will need to generate two JSON files. Of course, in theory, you could also create those JSON files manually. That would be possible. All of the code and everything that you might need is linked in the description below, GitHub repository, all of, and the textures for download because we will actually need some textures. But let's just see. The first step is going to be in the tutorial mod package. We're going to right click new package called trim. And inside there, we'll need two new Java classes. The first is going to be the mod trim materials class. And the second one is going to be the mod trim patterns class. Now, the contents of both of these will be copied over. This is going to be, you'll see that this is fairly straightforward, all things considered. And I will, of course, go through. We're going to start with the materials right here. And this should have no errors present as long as you have a bismuth item right here. If you don't, then of course, there would be a, an error here. That would be the case. We are going to start at the bottom over here with the helper method, the register method right here. You can see basically this is just a helper method to register our trim material properly. And here we're creating the trim material out of a, you know, a specific path. So we're going to give it a name, right? We're going to give it an item that's associated with it, the item model index. I'll get to this in a second when we get to the register method. And then we also have a translatable component basically giving you the description or the, just the name basically. And here at the end, we also got a style and then just a blank map that would probably, I believe that this is including or excluding what type of armor can actually, well, this particular material be put on. If you have it empty, then it should be able to be put on every armor. So there you go. And then here, the context just registers everything. Uh, in the bootstrap method, you can see we're calling this register method. And of course, in total, right, if you had this and you had like three different little trim materials, then you would still only have one register method. You'd have three calls right here and you'd have three differently named, obviously, resource keys, right? That's the whole idea. That should be basically self-explanatory, uh, basic Java in that case. So nothing too crazy. Calling the register method, we also have this register key, as you can see, as the second parameter. And that is the resource key of type trim material. Basically, it's a fancy resource location that points to a specific name here and just says, hey, this is a this is basically the resource location for our trim material, in this case, a bismuth trim material. And there we go. If we want to combine this or basically say, hey, this is the item associated with it. Then we have a text color. This is just the text color that when you hover over a trimmed armor piece, right, like a chest plate that has this particular trim material, then the color is basically just this. You can also change this in whatever way you'd like. And then the item model index is quite interesting. And that is when we think back to the last or second to last lecture, I believe, then what we had in the item model provider over here and the very top over here, we had the trim materials, the crazy linked hash map over here that points to a float. And that is basically what this item model index is. The item model index determines the color that your item texture will well change into, right? So when you when you trim a particular piece of armor, then what happens is that it gets a little bit of a different texture. And the color of that texture, right? The trim that is on the on the item, that is determined by the item model index right here in this case. So basically what I highly recommend is you take one of them that is the closest to it. I would say for all of them that we have, I think redstone could work. Copper, I think, might even be a little bit better. We're going to see the colors for bismuth in a second. But I think copper could probably be okay. The others don't really make a lot of sense in my opinion. Adding a custom one to this, I have no idea how complicated it is. I don't think it's possible because that would also require you to then change vanilla stuff. And I don't think that that's possible. So we're definitely not going to do that in this case. I highly recommend just take one of them that from vanilla. Basically, you will have find one that's going to closely match, right? Not exactly, but closely. And this is the mod trim materials when it comes to the trim patterns. Also going to be interesting and it's going to look almost exactly the same. 
However, we will run into one error that is a normal because we have not added to the smithing template. Because of course, for a trim pattern, you need a custom smithing template that should be, well, sort of fairly self-explanatory in this case. But you can see that the general like makeup of this particular class is almost the same as this one, right? We can see that basically we have the register method again, where we now create a trim pattern. And we call this in the bootstrap method. And then here we also have a resource key, this time of trim pattern in this case. And that's basically the idea. So let's clean this up. So to get rid of the error, well, let's just, you know, register the item over here. So this is going to be in the mod items class. It's going to be quite interesting. This is going to be a public static final deferred item of type item. And this is going to be the cow underscore smithing underscore template. There you go. Equal to the items deferred register dot register method. And the name here is going to be cow underscore armor underscore trim underscore smithing underscore template. So it's a little bit crazy. Then this is a supplier of, and this is quite important, smithing template item dot create armor trim template, passing in a resource location from namespace and path, passing in tutorial mod dot mod ID, and then the name Kalm here in this case. And there we go. It's very important that the resource location right here that we're giving this matches with the resource location given to the resource key right here. So those two have to match. Very important. Let's just step through all of the things we need for this item. So that would be adding it to the creative mode tab because that is a thing that I like to forget. The item model is a basic item model. So we don't need anything fancy right here. Just call the basic item method with this. And that is going to be the well the general stuff. And then we can go to the assets where there's a quite a few important things to do as well. Firstly, of course, the translation. The translation for the item is very straightforward. However, there's two more translations that we need. And that is for the trim pattern and the trim material. I'm just going to add this at the bottom. And you can see this is trim underscore pattern, then your mod ID, and then the name of the trim pattern. In this case, Kaupen, obviously taken from this name right here. And then the same thing goes with the material right here. And you can see that basically is going to make it so that when you hover over a trimmed armor piece, then it's going to properly display the name. Then we need some textures. However, the textures, the first one is going to be the easy one. And that is going to be the Kaupen Armor Trim Smithing Template. That just goes into the item folder. Nothing too crazy. However, when we add the trim, we need a color and we need a pattern. And those two are going to go into the following folders. Very important that you pay close attention over here because this is going to be quite important. So in the textures folder, we're going to right click new directory called trims with an S at the end. Inside of there, another new directory called color underscore palettes, making sure that this is written correctly. This is correct. Color is the American spelling and palettes with one L and two T's. I highly recommend you check out the GitHub repository for the correct spelling. This is extremely important. In the trims folder, we're going to make another new directory called models. And then in the side of that models directory, one last new directory called armor. Once again, the American spelling. Inside of the color palettes, we're going to add the bismuth.png. And instead of models armor, we're going to add the Kalpen and the Kalpen underscore leggings PNG. So the color palette is basically the color palette that the trim is going to be changed into when you're using this particular trim material. And the model, well, or the, you know, in this case, the Kalpen over here, right? The Kalpen arm model, that is the pattern that is going to be displayed on site on the, on the actual armor in this case. You can see I just added like a little bit of K here and, you know, nothing too fancy. It is one of the ones that already exists but it is pretty cool nonetheless. Now that we have this, that's all cool. I highly recommend what you can do is you can go down to the external libraries and you should find Neoforge over here, either at the top over here, or if you go down a little bit further, you should find this and you want to find the resources, AKA client extra. Once again, either at the very top or you should find it in here somewhere as well. Here you can see the assets, Minecraft textures, trims, and here we can see the base color palettes for, let's say for example, diamond. And you can see usually what happens, it goes from, you know, very bright to a very dark color. Uh, I have chosen to, well, use it a little bit differently, but that is totally fine. Of course, that is okay. And we can even see the basic trim pattern. You can see that basically is what you should, well, basically recolor for your own trim patterns. But we are not done quite just yet in the assets folder because it is extremely important you get this step right. Otherwise, nothing is going to work. And that is inside of the assets folder. We need to create a new folder called Minecraft. Inside of there, we need to create another new folder called Atlases. So this is the plural of Atlas. Make sure it is situated resources, assets, Minecraft, Atlases. 
And inside of there, I'll be copying over a JSON file, of course, also available to you down below, armor underscore trims dot JSON. And it's going to look kind of like this. It's very important that we get this right because otherwise it's not going to work. You can see this is a this is basically the palettes over here. So this is going to be for your custom trim models, right? This is the patterns. And you can see at the bottom, we're adding tutorial mod trims, models, armor, Kauten, as well as the Kauten leggings. Extremely important that we have this, otherwise we will run into issues and it's not going to be displayed properly. The same thing goes at the bottom right here. You have the bismuth name and then here tutorial mod trims, color palettes, bismuth. So this is basically pointing to the PNGs that we have literally just added right here should be, you know, come quite clear over here with the naming scheme. And then the name here obviously refers to the name inside of the material. This is going to be this one right here. And for the trims right here, well, that we don't basically need a name that just sort of handles it automatically. With that done, let's just like close a lot of stuff over here and let's think where we need to go next. Because, of course, the trims over here, they're not used yet because we haven't actually, well, made those into data gen. For this, we're going to make a new data gen class. So in the data gen package, right click new Java class, port the mod data pack provider. That's going to be what we're going to call this. And this is going to extend from the data pack built in entries provider. I'm going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. Here we need to make sure that we choose the correct one. We want to choose one of the bottom ones, if I recall correctly. Uh, let's just choose this one right here that has the completable future of provider and the mod ID of a set. That's going to be okay. And here what we're going to do is we're going to remove both the registry set builder as well as the set right here. Those are going to be added, of course, in a second. The mod IDs is as easy as saying set dot of tutorial mod dot mod ID and then the data pack entries builder. We're actually going to create this as a field. This is going to be a public static final registry set builder. I'm going to call this the builder or caps new registry set builder. We're going to add this for registries, registries dot, and this is going to be the trim underscore material. And here we're going to call mod trim materials colon colon bootstrap. And then we're going to call the add method again, this time for registries trim underscore pattern. And here, of course, can you guess it? Mod trim patterns in this case, colon, colon, bootstrap. And there we go. Now, instead of the red over here, we can pass in the builder and we should be good to go. With this done, we can now add it to the data generators class. So this is going to be generator dot add provider event dot include server this time. Very important. New mod data pack mod data pack provider passing in the pack output as well as the lookup provider with this done we basically are going to be able to generate the json files we have almost everything we need however there's quite another few things that are important and those are tags just like we had with our custom armor that we wanted to make trimmable we have to make sure that our material and our template are going to be well sort of allowed to be placed into the smithing table so for this we're going to say this dot tag and we're going to say item tags dot trim underscore materials. Here we're going to add mod items dot bismuth dot get. Easy enough. And then we're also going to add another thing, this dot tag. And that's going to be item tags dot this time is going to be trim underscore templates. And here we're going to add mod items dot Kalpen smithing template dot get. And there we go. But we're not done quite just yet because. We also need to add this to the recipe. It's very strange. This is a this is one of the strangest things for the custom trim pattern. You need to actually in your mod recipe provider add trim smithing over here, passing in the recipe output, passing in mod items dot smithing template dot dot get. I'm going to say resource location from namespace and path tutorial mod dot mod ID and the name here is going to be Kalpen. Do note that the resource location right here has to match the same resource location that we're giving the item right here, right? So this one, as well as the same that we have inside of the trim material or rather the trim patterns class. So with all of those matching, we're basically good to go. What we can do is run the data gen in this case, and I'm actually going to then show you the JSON files that generate basically the at least the trim pattern and the trim material ones that, like I said, in theory, you could also make those manually. I think this is way easier in this case. You know, those classes are super simple. They're not difficult. And like I said, any, you know, additional one is literally just another register call and having another resource key. So nothing complicated in that instance. 
Then inside of the data tutorial mode, you can see trim material, trim pattern. Let's close all of this craziness over here and let's take a look. And you can see even the two JSON files, they're really not that complicated either. You can see they're fairly straightforward and nothing too crazy, but those are basically going to be the main two JSON files that we need for our custom trim material and our custom trim pattern. And once we have this, including with, like I said, the tags as well as the recipe, now we can jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans, back in Minecraft, and let's take a look. First of all, let's just put in the bismuth right here with a already existing template. And you can see, I mean, come on, that looks so freaking good. I absolutely love the bismuth colors. They're so cool. I don't know. I, I really like this. Like, that one is just awesome, in my opinion. Now, of course, the bismuth colors on the bismuth one, eh, that, that's not quite, it doesn't quite work. But, you know, if I were to choose a different one over here, then absolutely it's going to work. I mean, still not too well situated, but I mean, it kind of works, right? I mean, that one, that one, I, no, 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 that one definitely kind of works. Like, that's totally fine. But yeah, that also works. However, what about this? Okay, this is the big deal. And of course, this also works for the custom trim. Let's just get all of them. Why not? Let's just get all of them with the blue over here as well. And then finally with the bismuth, because that is absolutely freaking fantastic, in my opinion. So let's just see, and we can see, so this one, I mean, come on, the, the K, I don't know, I just really like that. I just really like the uh, pattern over here, that's really cool. That's the wrong one, I wanted to get the, this one is, I mean, this one also just looks awesome. And then of course, you know, the redstone one, I don't know, might be my favorite, might be my favorite. But this one also, I mean, all of them are really freaking cool, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, that is basically custom armor trim patterns and trim materials added to Minecraft. Awesome. As per usual, all of the code is linked down below, but that's going to be it for this tutorial here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about item properties. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.